What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. So this is a little bit different of a video today. I, I wanted to talk to Brandy here about starting up a reef aquarium club. No, I am not trying to start a reef aquarium club. I was just going to ask that. No, <laughs> I'm not going to do a barbecue. More on that later. <laughs> but um, Brandy has set up a club before. And I thought that it would be helpful to the folks out there that wanted to start a club for themselves, kind of hear uh, some experiences that she might have had getting going on that. So, yeah, I mean, I think the very first thing I would tell anybody, and I told you this, is don't <laughs> like, like if if at all possible, find a way to get involved in something local, and if not local. There's tons of like online things. My first club was a Southern California Marine Aquarium Society. I'm still members of them. And I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. So like So yeah, why are you uh, yeah, why are you a member of like some LA club? <laughs> yeah, like I was on Instagram one day and I saw that there was this thing that said like grab a drink, jump on Zoom and like talk about corals. I was like, I can do that. And just accidentally, I had no idea who I was talking to. I didn't, like, this was Greg Carroll and that whole group who are all amazing reefers who've been reefing for, like, 50 years and started Reefapalooza mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I'm just on there talking to them. First girl ever. Not ever. But <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> I think I was the only um, woman on the meeting that night. And so that was exciting for them. But, yeah, it's just, it started from there. So uh, tell everybody about your club. My club is the Carolina Reefing Community. I started with this idea that as an adult, it's hard to make friends. I have no friends. I understand. Lies. You're friends with everybody. If you're friends with Dan, let us know. Crickets. Yeah. So like we're not going to school anymore. We're not playing sports normally. Maybe you have some work friends, but I know a lot of people don't want to keep hanging out with the same people that they've had work with all day. So it's just really hard to make friends as an adult. And I needed more friends. So I'm like, I'm going to start this thing. Um, and my whole goal from the beginning was it was just going to be a community. I didn't want to deal with some of the club issues that come up. And some of the decisions I've made have been based around this idea of what best supports a community as opposed to... How do we make the most money? How do we get the most people? Those kind of decisions have been less important to me. That's very different than like how I view the world. <laughs> Transactionally. Yeah. It's like, uh, so actually, but that is, a, that's a very, to me, it seems like a very rare, uncommon skill is the the whole community building aspect of it. Because, yeah, I'm like almost solely focused, you know, running a business for the money side of things and whatnot. Yeah. So my my PhD, like my whole foundation was built on this idea of participatory culture and how nothing is successful without a certain level of participatory culture. Um, this is an idea that came from like fandoms, um, like anime and K-pop gaming and just that kind of stuff where people get really obsessed with certain things. And what is it about those certain things that make them obsess? And it's the participatory culture. And so I was using that as a jumping off point to improve science education, essentially. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's been like used in business. And like you can kind of predict whether or not a business is going to be highly successful or not based on how they're able to leverage participatory culture. Sometimes they do it unintentionally, but when you have an in some intention behind it, it kind of just add some extra oomph to it, like propels it a little bit faster. So all those principles is kind of what I rolled into this club. Like, It sounds a lot more intentional. Now. <laughs> it's like, I just wanted to make friends at this extremely PhD level. Yeah, well, so like some of the things that I wanted to make sure there happen is like participatory culture relies on the idea that there's mentors and mentees and that those roles can change and that sometimes the expert no longer is the expert in this certain topic and like that everybody's input is valuable so you're never shaming anybody like even if 
they might be wrong, like you're helping them and guiding them into the right concept. So, so it's just community building is what it is, but it's a very research level of community building. Yeah, I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to start a club. <laughs> it's been really fun. There's been times that it was very stressful and I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. But I, right now I'm very excited about where we're at. It's, it's hard work. Which is why I would say don't do it. If if you can avoid it, don't do it. Yeah, because I'm sure that there's some folks out there that are like, uh, I don't have access to a local club at all. But it's now it probably doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. Though it's interesting, though, because since I've started this, like, I didn't think we had anything really local to me. Um, and I was told about a club that was pretty small. And I joined it. Um, but I just wanted more of a community feel. Since then, I've been a, I've become aware of way more clubs in my area, but it's like 17 people, 10 people, these mm -hmm. small little micro groups. Um, and they're just not good at advertising. Not that I would expect anybody at that size to be good at advertising, but there might actually be something near you, um, but you might not be aware of it. But even if there's not, Zoom is a thing. Mm-hmm. It, I, I would almost argue that rather than like size of group, I think that finding finding like your tribe, finding people that you actually like to spend even online time with is probably just more valuable than anything else. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless you're just in it for freebies or something, which I'm sure. Some people are, yeah. which is fine. Like that, that's part of it too. I just, I think that the traditional club style is kind of getting obsolete. Like, like one of the things that people tell me a lot when they hear I started a club, they're like, oh, group buys. And I'm like, I've never done a group buy as a club. Um, I've had some of my club members organize it for people who are local, but I've got people from all over the country in the club. I always joke that we should just have named it the reefing community because like one of my admin is in Idaho. I had a member from Utah this, this past week. Craig Bingman gets on every single meeting and where's he at like michigan or wisconsin somewhere where know. there's lots of snow and he gets on every single meeting you don't it doesn't matter where you are like technology connects us surprisingly or they're all just chat bots yep they're all chat bots like dev right yeah dev dev you're a chat bot we've decided neither one of us have ever met you dev so you're fake <laughs> <laughs> um i think one of the other things too is like what benefits are the people getting? Like a lot of times the only thing people can think of is um, the group buys, right? Well, because this is this is way back in the day when I actually attended some like local club meetings and stuff like that. But there's always at some point in the meeting, it's like, okay, guys, everybody, you know, pay your $20 a year or whatever it is. It's like these, like, you know, the annual membership, like guys, you know, like update your membership payments. And then invariably somebody in the audience is going to ask like what do we get for our membership like what's this twenty dollars for i feel like that's a twofold question the first part like just directly so i don't require someone to be a paid member to participate um i want anybody no matter what to participate i i feel like when i start forcing people it's a pay to play type thing and community doesn't build really off of pay to play. I don't want to be exclusive. I want to be open to anybody. Um, so there's a lot of benefits that are extraneous to the paid membership. And some of those things are like every single month I try and have a trade show tier speaker. Like you've come to speak for my club. I've had Reef Bum. I've had Chris Meckley has come to speak a couple of times. So my club members who typically don't attend trade shows have never had an opportunity to interact with face-to-face. -face. And because it's Zoom, they can talk to the person face-to-face. -face, they can hear the tone. They can get to know them. And so I think that that's a, a special experience for a lot of people. So that's the first thing. And I think the second thing, and probably the most important thing to me, is just the social interaction, right? It's the reason I started the club. Like, it's hard to make friends. And when I start geeking out about my corals to some of my, like, my son's friend's parents, they're like, uh-huh, this is very boring. Can you stop? Um, so having people who, like, get excited about it with you is really important. And I know sometimes you can get that on forums, but you still don't 
tone is lost. Like mm. yesterday, I saw the snow, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's snowing. And Van said, oh, my God, it's snowing. <laughs> it's com <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely so, different. Exact same words, but like completely different meaning. So I think having that that voice interactive aspect and being able to see each other's facial expressions. I think it builds a different type of relationship than you do when you're chatting on a forum or Instagram. And I think you're less likely to get people who are just being mean to each other because it's harder to forget that you're talking to a human mm -hmm. that's maybe doing something you might would consider dumb. Hmm. Income. Okay. I think one of the other big benefits that people um c is raffles um mm -hmm. raffles are hard though and i don't know if everybody realizes this but to do a raffle there's like some legal things right yeah i've seen some wonky raffle implementation so one was just i saw a like a local fish store straight up on on facebook wanted to just do everything as a raffle for like sales. It's like, we're raffling off a, a, an aquarium. We're raffling off a pump. We're raffling off a light. And I'm like, does- That's illegal. Yeah, I was like, is anybody gonna tell them? <laughs> this is illegal gambling. Yeah. This is like federally not cool. Like, And it's on social media. Yeah, so like the very first thing you need to do is set up a business. Like you actually need to go set up a business. So my club, Carolina Reefing Community is a 501c. We are a social club, and that gives us the ability to do two raffles a year. So we're even limited on the amount of raffles we can do. As a, as a nonprofit, you yes, can do two a year. Yes, we are a nonprofit organization. We can do two a year. And if we do anything beyond that, it can't be a raffle. And there's, again, not again, but not legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely there's, not legal advice over here. But there's three things that are that make it a lottery and if you hit all three of these things you're doing something illegal a giveaway is only two of these things so it's consideration which means you have to pay or follow on instagram it's, to, it get, likes. it's like to get something of value yeah, yeah. That's, so, that's a contract term consideration yeah yeah whatever the prize is is monetary value and it's random so if you're doing a contest, so we do a lot of contests to give things away in the club. So that way we're not hitting our raffle max where we're like the the best picture wins. We do a lot of trivia things. So that stops making that makes it not be random. The first response wins um, or we allow just anybody to enter. So it then takes away the consideration. Mm -hmm. So we do a couple of things. I don't know that anybody would ever report it. But we do not do raffles unless it's a actual raffle. We do a lot of giveaways. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it. Yeah, better. like when I when I did that uh, that barbecue thing, um, we wanted to do some raffle like activity. But this is not a nonprofit. I wanted just to to do the raffle because people are familiar with raffles. Mm -hmm. But we didn't allow anybody to buy raffle tickets. Like if you if you showed up, you got raffle tickets. It's just mm -hmm. it's part of the event. You know, yep. It's basically a giveaway at random. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff that you kind of have to, to be aware of to kind of dodge like legal liability. Yeah. And I, I from some of the stuff I see, I, I think some people don't know these rules. Mm -hmm. Again, what's the chance that they get reported? Probably pretty slim. But I try to follow the rules as mm -hmm. closely as I can. So. Yeah, and even like, uh, and this is this isn't to specific to the raffle thing, but when I did that barbecue thing, it, there there were like some hurdles just offering food mm -hmm. because uh, if if I'm charging people to attend the thing and also providing food, I can't be, I, it can't look like I'm selling <laughs> food and calling it an entry fee, right? Yeah. Without like a catering license, and. So I'm like, well, do I get I don't a know. I'm not ever coming here if I don't get food. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm coming. Yeah. Uh, so is it like, uh, uh, do I need a catering license? Do I need a professional kitchen, like a certified kitchen to, you know. For the hygiene aspect. Right. Stuff, yeah. But there, there's like all these like weird loopholes. Like if it's a potluck, 
absolutely you're allowed to to have a potluck <laughs> and have people bring food and not need a commercial kitchen, not need um a, a license or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But then I'm asking like this 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 official at the at the county I'm like, okay, so if I have a potluck, am I allowed to contribute to my own potluck? And they're like, well, it gets a really? it, it gets a little bit squirrely because it's uh-huh. again it's it goes back to the uh you know, are you charging? Because you typically don't charge at a potluck. Are you charging and then delivering food? Because that yeah. sounds like food service, right? Yeah, making sure you're not a restaurant. Yeah, and, flying and, under the radar. But I, but the, there's also like the, the the totality of like the facts around the event. It's like, look, for for my particular barbecue thing, right? People are driving in from other states. People are flying in from other countries. <laughs> I promise you they're not doing it for some $20 down the street barbecue <laughs> chain in Ohio. Yeah. Like that ain't happening. You're that important. They're here for you. People got hotel rooms and flights. Yeah. It ain't for the bar for the for the food aspect of the barbecue. <laughs> they wanted to come see the- anyway. But yeah, there, there's all these like le- legal issues surrounding all this activity yeah. that you think is like super innocent. Yeah. And it probably is innocent, but at some point did, someone did something that was not okay. Yeah. You, you yeah. need to like make sure that you have all your, all your bases covered. Yeah. Because it's a huge headache when stuff does go wrong. So hopefully so, like s- some folks will get some ideas based on like based on this podcast. Yeah. Just at least certain things to look out for. I think one of the other benefits to members can be um, – so this kind of goes into the sponsors also. So – our, I tell my members to try and buy from sponsors if possible. I'm not going to, obviously I can't control who people buy from, but I do think that it means something to my members that someone is supporting the club in a way that allows us to run. So a lot of our members will prioritize buying from sponsors. And a lot of our sponsors, and I'm trying to do a better job of this this year, our sponsor letter, we had like this list of benefits to the sponsors. And I was like, but are these actually benefits? Like, I just want to be critical, right? Like, be self-critical. And yeah, so I contacted yeah. one of our sponsors, Paul Lakeside Reefer. He's amazing. I was like, what was the return on investment on this? He's like, I have no way of knowing. And I'm like, well, that's a problem. Yeah. And I know that I've had club members who've bought stuff from him because I've seen them post things. Um, but he was like, he told me as the president, I was unaware of this. <laughs> Sorry, Paul, <laughs> that he gave a discount to club members that we had a special code and nobody had ever used the code. So I'm like, that's a me problem. That's an action I should have taken. And I'm letting down my sponsors by not actively promoting that or even being aware of it right that's a problem for me yeah the the, the tracking of success is kind of challenging because I mean, we, we get hit up like title gardens gets hit up for um like sponsorships for all different types of clubs not daily but a lot mm-hmm. certainly a lot and we typically don't mess with any of it because of how not trackable it all is. Mm-hmm. And this doesn't just extend to clubs. Like there, there's one, one of my staff is he really wants to advertise on a certain social media platform because he uses that platform and he sees like our competitors. Like these, I constantly see competitor ads on my feed. And if we did this, we would get a ton of views. And I'm like, I don't care about views. Like views whether it's a you know 10 100 thousand a million views it doesn't translate necessarily to dollars right i need actual conversions yeah and tracking that and so for example like our newsletter that we pay for uh every single time one of our sales happens and if it happened through that newsletter it will say it will actually say this came from that interaction and so I, there are some some tools for like social media tracking but on the club level ah like again you could you could use the coupon code but apparently that coupon code was zero which is not wonderful but is it zero because nobody knew about it (laughs) or because no club members were buying stuff i suspect it was because i never told anybody about the code right like that's a problem so i had asked paul lakeside reefer about whether or not the benefits that we thought he was getting, whether or not they existed. Um, And 
that's something that I'm, my whole team this year, like everybody has tasks and a certain number of posts they're going to do a month where we make sure that we're actually supporting our sponsors back. So it's one thing for a sponsor, I think, to just be pouring money into a group. And I want to make sure I'm intentional about supporting them back. And the code that he had, like that should have been being repeated everywhere. And Mm -hmm. this year we're going to make sure that happens. And we have a whole spreadsheet set up with dates and who's doing what and for which sponsors. And I think making sure that you're doing something so that you're not just a suck, like be a fountain, not a drain. (laughs) Like that's where that whole, like my whole Instagram identity comes from is like, make sure you're giving back and you're not just taking. And I, I think that our sponsors in general like helping, but there's only so many people you can help. And not that you should expect anything necessarily, but I really do want to make sure I'm doing something back for sponsors and not just a one-way street. Nice. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, we have like Lou Eckes, he came on and he gave us a ton of product to give away. So that's a benefit to club members. Like every single club. So he came on as a speaker and then. He had, came as a speaker yeah. and as like the kindness of his heart, he's like, here's a bunch of product and he sent it to us. So every month we're giving away Tropic Marin that's things. Cool. When yeah. I was a speaker, I didn't give you guys anything. <laughs> I think you did. Oh, did I? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I think I won a gift card and from you for something else like personally and I use oh. that. I think that's what it was. Yeah, we should probably also talk about like uh when 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 setting up a club, just how much of this startup is out of pocket. All of it to begin with. This so last year was the first year. So this club I've had running now for 4 years. And last year was the first year I reimbursed myself at all for any expenses. And that wasn't all expenses. Um, and my vice president also took on a couple of expenses that didn't get reimbursed because there just wasn't the money to reimburse. Mm-hmm. I think this year is going to be, and our fourth year is going to be the first year that we may actually be able to reimburse ourselves for any of the expenses slash all expenses are coming out of a club bank account, not our own personal bank accounts, which is feels super successful it's like such an achievement to be at that i didn't think i would ever be at that so yeah that's that's a big thing and that's where sponsorships make a huge difference and um i think hunter he he's on my board also he used to be the president of another club and he gave me some advice because i told him i was coming on here to talk to you he gave some advice and one of the things he said was don't be afraid to ask for money Mm -hmm. like that was one of the things that would throw him off is he felt really uncomfortable asking for money um, and that actually spurred a whole conversation with my board this year because I'm like, I think we're going to actually have money in the bank account at the end of the year. How much money do we want to take in? Which I feel like is not something a lot of people think about. And this might be like a later point, but like I, money can cause drama. Yeah, for sure. Especially if it's if it's unexpected. Like, let, let's say you said you had, I don't know, how much in the bank right now? few hundred bucks yeah what if you had like a hundred thousand dollars in the bank like you 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 did something like put on like a big event and it just went crazy and you had way more people with way more booths sold or whatever it is it went nuts and suddenly there's all this money and there was no discussion earlier about like uh how do we spend it or just like what? Where does it go? Yeah. Who owns it? Like, because yeah. because I I've, oh. I I've seen a club where it was like I've heard uh, this happening multiple times. Yeah, it's like there there's like all of a sudden a, a huge influx of money, and in some cases like the the president of the club is just like oh yeah that just all is all my money personally all my money, and that's a great way to like mess up your five hundred one c. Or and Your hopefully, it, ho- and hopefully, calls it, a huge fight with everybody. Yeah, well, hopefully, it was a, a nonprofit to begin with. If like, not, it, taking all that money still is illegal. Like it's a problem. It, it's who knows? Like yeah. it, it opens the door for all kinds of messes, and I, I don't know if, if if we needed to talk any more about that. But like drama and clubs are like peas and carrots. Like it, it's there's there's always going to be. Um, you know, different personalities in these groups. 
and when you kind of like stir in some monetary nonsense and then straight up corruption, <laughs> it, it, it it leads to some freaking hilarious interactions. There was one club. I don't even I don't even think it's around anymore. But it used to be a big club here in, in this in this region that had like over a couple hundred members at one point. And at one at some time, there was so much drama that like the new board or something like that had to get security to make sure that the old board didn't show up. Oh my god. They had to like they had to like hire police. It's like if this person shows up, they're trespassing, arrest them. Oh my god, that's so bad. Something something lawsuits and money and oh, Yeah, I think there can be a lot of room for drama. Like work is one of those things. We talk about this. Like this is mm -hmm. why partnerships can be hard, right? Because one person thinks they're doing too much and the other person isn't doing enough and it's like you have to remember this is unpaid labor. Right. Cuz like sometimes like the that can work it's like it's the two extremes, right? If there's if there's no money coming in, right? It's it's a problem because it's like I'm doing all the work, I'm not getting paid. So and so is not doing any work and I'm feeling like they're not ho holding up their end of the bargain. But if there was money, it, it helps to like ameliorate a lot of that stuff until there's a lot of money. And then suddenly it's like this person is getting how much money and they're not doing enough work. They're taking half or what, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. It's like I literally did all the work and that person is walking away with a gigantic check and now they're yeah. extra bitter. And so yeah. it, it happens at the, the, the at the two poles. Yeah. So that I think that that's one of the things I'm trying to avoid also is like I want this to be a community. I don't community want it first, to be not about money. Get rid of all this money. Yeah. I don't want it to be a business venture. Like I you me and Than are really good friends. I don't like the idea of business. I don't want to run a business. I'm running a business because starting a club is running a business, but like I try and keep that to a minimum. I'm not trying to become the most monetarily successful club ever. I want it to be a community. And if money starts to be in the way, then I've done something wrong. Like, um, and I think some of that also the the unpaid aspect, like, I don't expect any of our board members to ever get paid for this. Like, this should not be paid position. If it's so much work that you think that, you, that it should be a paid position, I've done something wrong again, right? It's not supposed to be a business. Um, it's supposed to be a fun club. Yeah. Fun and easy. If it stops being fun and easy, I should. That, that's do it. been the uh, that's been the the key phrase for this whole weekend. <laughs> it's it's been said more than a dozen times. Yeah, it's, it's like if it's not fun, fun and, and easy, easy something's do terribly wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's it's all gone to hell. Yeah, and so like that's kind of how I see this too. And my first my first board actually, I is completely different than it was when I first started it. And because people have jobs, they're not getting paid for this. They're not going to get paid for this. They're not getting any kind of special perks for it other than now they have to do work without getting paid. Um, as much as I try and like minimize it, it's there's work that has to be done. And I think that there is also this aspect of being okay as people come and go. Because people are going to have to come and go. Work is going to take precedence where they actually make money to pay bills, like that should take precedence. Family should take precedence. Like people get sick. So things happen. So a lot of times I think that there can be a bitterness as like people have to change roles. And I, I tried very hard to just be like, you let me know what you can do. And m with my current board, like we've had to come in and out of who's doing what because people's kids got sick. Like, um, I think one of Hunter hit one of his um, co-workers had a child that died. And so he's stepping in for the co-worker. So he's going to have to step back from the club a little bit. So like mm -hmm. having those like very clear designations and being okay with the fact that like, yeah, you're not going to be working full time because it's not it's not a full time job. And without getting upset about it, like now I have to do all this stuff and. It, that just can't be part of it. And that complicates things like further when it's it's beyond just the monthly meeting where when you're actually doing an event and now you're doing like event planning. Mm -hmm. um, 
one thing that that we do here that seems to be very, very, very useful and helpful mm -hmm. is we use uh, like a free project management software called Asana. Mm -hmm. And that's for the folks at home, that's A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. It's a free app. <laughs> Not sponsored. I was about to say not sponsored. But it, it really helped because um, it sh everybody knows what everybody else is working on. Mm -hmm. And if you're unable to do something and need help, you can call for help. Uh, people, I, I'm able just to assign tasks to people. They can assign purchase requests and tasks to me. So it's it's just all documented. And so the, you don't run into situations later on of like so-and-so saying, well, that wasn't on my plate. It's like, no, 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 no. We have receipts. We know what <laughs> who's responsible for everything. And if you if you couldn't do it or needed help with it, you know, it's, it's all it, highly trackable. Yeah. And uh, it, it's made things like super fluid here. And I think that especially for something like uh, event planning or or even like meeting coordination, mm -hmm. uh, if, if certain things need to be done. But yeah, so now everybody's aware of it. Yeah, I think. So we actually have two different shows that we help with. We help with Reefing USA, um, which is a smaller show that travels around mm -hmm. um, and we do very basic stuff for him because it, it's smaller, so it doesn't need to be a whole lot. But then we also do the Aquatic Expo, which is huge. We have speakers come in. It's reptile freshwater, salt water. We have a huge raffle, um, ma major big-time speakers. Um, I think the speaker last year was a guy who has a show on the Discovery Channel. Mm. Um, Dana Riddle talked, um, and all of that stuff was paid for. Um, so it's it's a big show, and I think it's growing. Um, so this year, I think we might actually try and use that to try and like manage some of the stuff that my club will be responsible for for the aquatic expo. I think it'll help out a lot because again, it's like these are largely unpaid things. It's easy to let stuff slip or or whatever. So and like yeah. that that's part of it too. Like I expect things to slip. Like like just set your expectations correctly. Like, At least. Arm yourself with, a, with yeah. some some tools to yeah. Realize make when it, it slips. Realize one, you have to notice immediately when it's slipping, and two, be ready to pick up the ball. Like yeah, like you, and as starting a pres like starting a club, if you're the president, the ball kind of stops with you. And that's something Greg Carroll told me. He's like, he's like, if it's not getting done, it's your fault. Yeah. as president. And I I take that to heart. And it's like, well, if it's not getting done, and I don't have time to do it. I can't be mad at anybody else for letting the ball drop. It's my fault for not finding the time. Right. Um, and I think that you – that also can some lead to some possessiveness, I think. Sometimes I've seen other clubs where it's like they don't want anybody else to do it because they've been doing it by themselves for so long. So it's hard to allow that fluid out but also the fluid in Like as, as you have – like, Elisa is new to my club. She's from Idaho. And she, oh, my God, she's absolutely amazing. But, like, that was a very fluid thing that as, like, I saw that she was she was very active in on my Facebook group, um, interacting with people, good advice, very nice, wanted to help. And I just asked her if she was willing. And she, she actually felt honored that I asked her. And I'm like, no, I'm asking you to do work. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you think it is. I was like, this might not be fun for you. Um but like seeing those kind of things and as those people bubble up to the surface, like giving them a role because that's what they're that's what they want. That's what they need. And like just as people get busy, people get unbusy. Her kids just went off to college. So she's a little bored and mm -hmm. like she's trying to find something to fill that time. Well, I have something for you. <laughs> so like just being fluid and, and flexible is really important. Yeah, it's like it's like it's an honor. It's like you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> I'm like, all right, uh, we're gonna go and paint a fence here. <laughs> like, no, it's probably gonna be a lot of work. But she loves it and she's enjoying it, and so it's good. Like, as like someone gets is starting to get burnt out, having those, like, being ready to flip people in and out is really important. I think. Yeah. For unpaid work, like that's the big thing. We I can keep, keep saying. on saying, like, by the way, no one's no one's getting paid. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I think the biggest tip I have, though, is get yourself a smoyer. <laughs> I, I, do I not brag about smoyer all the time? 
He seems to be doing a lot of good work. So Smoyer is her vice president. He's my vice president. He he came on the scene when I was starting to get burnt out and I was getting ready. I think you asked me once, you're like, do you even enjoy this? Like I was starting to get burnt out and he came in and just gave the whole thing life. He's the reason why we're going to not be zero at the end of the year like and he's done this in clubs before he's really good at this he doesn't like being in the forefront he's probably going to get mad that i said his name at all but like he just just is constantly chipping away at something he's always doing something and um he is if you have someone like that come by like you keep them happy like whatever they need you keep them happy so. having like good operations people is like really really nice that can just that can get stuff done and be organized. Yeah, and he's and he always lets me know what's going on. That's a big thing too. Like it's one thing to do things, but having that communication as well. Like I'm always like, yeah, just go do it, but let me know that it's happening so that way I'm aware. Like, mm -hmm. like having that flexibility and the lack of possessiveness. Like when someone is competent, letting them just go with it and. I think that he's that's like really your important. Alexander Hamilton. Oh my God, Alexander Hamilton! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's Smoyer. Smoyer is amazing, um, and I don't know that the club would still be going without him. Like he, he really was a lifeline. So nice. Shout out to Matt Smoyer. <laughs> <laughs> on 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 that positive note, I want to ask the the community, like if you guys are part of a group yourselves. What's your favorite thing about um, about your club? And if you have any extra saucy drama where things just <laughs> fell apart and burned to the ground, I want to hear about all that stuff even more. You love the drama. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Spill the tea. That, that's what. I, that, that's why I'm here. Like this is why I don't join clubs, so I can watch <laughs> them burn from the outside. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for for joining in. Hopefully, uh, I can be wildly entertained by the comments below. <laughs> Thanks, Brandy, for, for sharing your experiences with your club. Of course. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Happy reefing. See ya. Burn it to the ground.